Hello everyone. So recently one of my patrons asked me something regarding how to do properly UX and UI icons or to do designs using stable diffusion. With my previous version of my model, you were still able to do this, but uh, with version five, I've managed to improve a lot of the things under the hood. So now the model behaves much more properly to do things like that. But I've noticed that many people still don't fully understand how to use this. So in today's episode, we're going to focus on how to do icons for UI properly and a few things we should be aware of. So the most common thing that many of you, based on what I've seen, are doing is they're going to go into the text to image tab and they're going to write their prompt. In our case, this is going to be a black and white to the Viking skull and bones icon. And also I'm going to add design to two. And the first thing you're going to do in situations like this is probably lower your sample steps to 12, uh, change the resolution to 768 by 768. This is quite important simply because uh, my toolkit is fine tuned on that resolution. So you can still use it at 512, at 512, but you will not get the same decent results like everybody else so what usually would people do in situations like this is they're going to press generate and they're going to hope for the best and in some situations yes you can get designs like that that look nice and so on but for a ua or ux designer this is not exactly what you want and in certain situations you want something much more specific so the first most logical thing what people do when they go for a specific shape or form is they're going to go into image to image tab and then they're gonna they are going to load their image they're gonna paste their prompt and they're going to try to generate this and right now you can see that this is working but usually with values like 0 0.65 for example we will not get much of a variation of this and this way we're preserving much more of the shape but we still experience some issues with the insides of the white area and the reason this is happening is because when stable diffusion adds noise on top of the image it doesn't have enough space to work with so to counter this we can introduce a little bit of randomness inside of it so what i did is i went inside of photoshop and i have sketched this to introduce a little bit of noise and some interesting shapes inside of it and to show you the same results we're going to open this in a new tab we're going to reuse the same seed so we get exactly the same result and now when we press generate you can already start to see all those internal details how are bringing a little bit more detail and much more randomness and interesting shapes into our design also let's change our resolution 768 by 768 and lower our sample steps and now you can already see the difference between 512 and 768 and how much things look much more sharper and now if we disable the seed again and get back to 0.75 we'll start to get much more interesting shapes and forms that are happening inside of the design but let's say we want to follow exactly the shape of the design since this can be an icon for a game where we have this like a mock-up or this is like a design for a tattoo that this is sort of a piece that goes somewhere and we want really interesting and nice shapes inside of the design but we want to preserve the silhouette and the outline of the whole thing so in situations like this what we can do is let's lock the seed for now so we we can see how we can do that and if we go to the control net we can enable control net we can select scribble for our preprocessor and also scribble for our model and here we're going to load our original shape where we just have the design and the silhouette of the whole thing so 
to see the differences let's open this in a new tab and let's press generate and you can already start to see how this is trying to preserve the shape that we have so if we open this you can see that the shape that we've designed is still getting preserved now we can unlock the seed and we can try to get a better design Also, what we can do is we can play with the amount of the noise. So with values like around 0.85, we will bore much more everything inside and we will introduce a little bit more noise and that will give us really interesting shapes and forms while still preserving the outlines of this design. But in case you don't want to do that, you can always disable control net. And you can see that with the same seed we'll get something completely different and by using control net we have the ability to increase the noise and play with the details occurring inside of the design without breaking the shape so let's enable control net again for a second and let's say that we like the shape and the forms and the design that we're going in this form in this direction but we want to change the design so Let's say we want to move the skulls up, uh, the bones up behind the skull and try something different. Well, we can also do that. For example, here is a similar image that I did by just changing everything. So I'm reusing the same seed like this one. And I'm also going to introduce the clean silhouette inside of my control net. Now, when we press generate, the design is going to reflect that and if we don't like how this is looking we can always lower a little bit the noise to around 0 0.75 for example and we may get some really interesting shapes occurring inside of the design another thing we can do is we can go down to control net and we can lower the weight for example like 0 0.5 0.65 and this will break a little bit the shapes and forms outside and give the model a little bit more room to breathe while still maintaining that form so this is like an additional extra layer of control next let's try to increase this a little bit more And you can already see how we're getting some really cool shapes inside. So let's say we want to remove the tattoo element from our prompt. And we want to say that we want something different. Let's, for example, try to see a different scenario where we want to do a flask. Like we just mentioned earlier, if we just use this as an image, let's disable control for the moment. And let's say black and white 2D health potion flask icon design the moment we generate let's lower this to 0 0.75 the moment we generate the main issue that will happen is because of the lack of noise we will get the same issues like before and to counter that we can introduce this in the same fashion and what's really cool about this approach and this technique is that we can do a lot of interesting shapes and forms and completely experiment with the designs that we want to do so the moment we generate we will end up with something like this we can continue generating but we have a lock seed so let's unlock it And we're already getting something really interesting this way we can experiment and push our designs into the direction that we want while keeping a black solid background with a solid white color by using the proper image and knowing how to introduce noise inside of our design another thing we can do here actually is if we want to preserve the shape again we can use the flask here as well
and we'll end up with a design that looks like a typical US uh, UX UI icon that's for a video game. Well, I hope this video is uh, informative and you managed to learn how to do things like that. In the next video, I have something in mind that I think we should talk about. And for example, in the, today we talked about how to do uh, icons and things like that, but we discussed how you can do a single icon or a design. In the next video, I'll show you how to take advantage of the prompting section to make hundreds of designs with a single prompt. So that's it for this video, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.